Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, I have five Rieslings in front of me, three from a German winery called Gut Hermannsberg, uh, Good Hermann's Hill, uh, and then one from New Zealand and one from Australia. I've got them... I don't know whether I've got them in the right order. There is only one way to find out. I've got them roughly vintage order, but then there's two dry, two, two dry ones from the German uh, people and a off-dry one. No idea how sweet it is. First one, though, is uh, from New Zealand, and it's Tin Pot Hut Turner Vineyard of Riesling from Marlborough, 2012 vintage, weighing in at 10% alcohol, which makes me think it may have a little bit of uh, residual sugar in there, but um, we shall see. Now, it's the start of November here, so it's a pretty young wine. I mean, uh, six, seven months old. And um, it's uh, first one of the first things I smell is this slightly candied edge of uh, Dolly mixtures. It's a, it's a character I get in quite a few uh, uh, young wines. But it's also a character I get in slightly older ones uh, from, from New Zealand, older Rieslings from New Zealand. Uh, I'm always in two minds about, uh, about New Zealand Riesling and uh, whether I like it or not. I like the full fleshy Central Otago ones. Uh, some of the Marlborough ones seem a bit on the fey side. Uh, not quite sure what this one is going to be. It's probably not fair tasting it at this early age, but I'm going to do it anyway. Actually, it's pretty nice. Zippy, zesty. Um, it's got things like lime rather than lemon, and uh, maybe even a, li a little bit of uh, something like clementine. Um, Mandarin orange type of character. Um, round it all, uh, there's this framework of acidity and there's this touch of minerality. And yes, I'd say we're off dry, but um, what the, you really don't notice, it, it's, it's certainly not a sweet wine by in, any means, particularly with that acidity to um, counterbalance the, uh, uh, the sweetness. So it's one of those that, um, yes, I'd, I'd certainly pull it out with food, uh, but because of that touch of sweetness, uh, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd try it with some slightly spicy stuff. I think, uh, I think that would go down rather nicely. Yeah, it's funny because um, it's, it's this sweet core of um, very, very ripe yeah, tinned mandarin oranges rather than uh, as much as, uh, uh, as fresh ones. And, um, but then this dry finish. I think, I, I, I'm not sure what the residual sugar is there, but um, I think there's a bit, but not too much. Let's start on these uh, these German guys. Uh, so I've got two dry ones from them, as I, as I said, um, and they were in the Nahe here, uh, a uh, region that uh, probably deserves a, a far wider audience than it than it, it gets. Um, and um, I, I mean German labels, uh, they're trying to slim them down and put as few words as possible on here. So this is a good good start. So I, I look at it. It's got Good Hermsburg, the name of the winery, and Niederhauser, the name of the vineyard. If it just says Niederhauser on, as opposed to well, just have a look at this the, the label for the last one where it says Spätlaser. If it says it just says Niederhauser, it's going to be a dry wine. Another way that you can tell is um, alcohol levels. This one is 12% alcohol, as is the one next door to it, whereas the off-dry one uh, is 9%, so uh, it's got some unfermented sugar in there. Anyway, quit the waffle, let's taste. Now, the Tin Pot Hut is a nice, it's a pretty drink. Here, you're in something that's uh, altogether a little bit more serious. Um, and so I stick my nose in there, and yes, it is fruity. It has got those elements of citrus fruit, maybe some apple in there as well. But it's more this um, undercurrent of soil that comes through. There's a bit of um, sulfur dioxide there that's um, uh, give, uh, I, give, making it a little bit awkward to taste at the moment, or to smell at the moment. But um, underneath, it feels like there is, there is something that is sleek, but rich, and isn't that how we like them? Oh, I love that. There's that stealing minerality to it. Things like herbs, um, and this mixture of richness with the sweet and sour. When I say sweet, it's a dry wine, uh, but there's this quite voluptuous, um, uh, voluptuous citrus fruit, if that makes sense. When I think of voluptuous fruit, I usually think of things like uh, more exotic, like pineapple and uh, passion fruit, but here, it is really ripe citrus, um, and uh, but it's playing not quite second fiddle, but it's play. It, it, it's got equal billing with the character of the soil. It, it, it seems to have sucked something out of there. Uh, this yeah, the earthy herb. There's some slaty character there. Not quite sure what the makeup of the vineyard is here, but uh, not sure whether it's going to say on the back. No, it doesn't say anything on the back. But um, altogether a more grown-up wine than the Tin Pot Hut. The Tin Pot Hut's nice, but this is um, more serious. Let's try its, uh, its brother from uh, Schloss Bockelheim. So this is called Schloss Bockelheimer. And uh, again, 2010 vintage, 12% alcohol. This one's playing higher up the scale. I get those similar, similar type of fruit flavours, 
uh, but um, it's it doesn't doesn't feel like it's going to be as rich and deep and profound. But it's got more yeah, it's more higher melody line. Maybe this is the bass and this is the uh, uh, the higher melody. But uh, again, it smells like it's the fruit and it's the soil and the two sitting together rather nicely at the moment. I'm never quite sure with um, uh, the modern style of German dry wines whether you should be drinking them at this stage or whether you whether they they are the better all the better for uh, four or five years. I do like them like this where you. Can can tell the the difference between the different vineyards but anyway I better taste it haven't I oh um, <laughs> that's really good too uh, and I, I was saying about like maybe the first one is a bit more bassy and uh, slaty stony and this one I don't know whether there's a volcanic element here but there's um, um, yes it's got this it, it, it feels like higher up the musical register if you want to put it that way but um, but still quite a profound wine I'm really not quite sure uh, which I prefer. I think that I think they're both great. I think they're both uh, quite different. Um, but um, I, I, do you know what? I, I'd love to sit down with a, a glass of each of these and uh, uh, polish off a, a rather large piece of uh, well cooked fish. And um, I've got a feeling that at the end of it, I still wouldn't know which I prefer. They're both they're both really good. Let's see how Australia can cope after those two. Uh, this is uh, Lewin Estate Art Series Riesling uh, from Margaret River, 2010 vintage. Uh, as with these two, weighing in at 12% alcohol. This is also quite tight and limey. I miss some of the um, earthy profundity of the, the ones before, but it, uh, what, the ones before. But um, uh, it's a step up for me from the from the, the tin pot hut. Uh, here it feels like there is there's going to be some grip, a bit of mineral character, not as strong a mineral character as the uh, uh, the previous two. But uh, yeah, the apple, um, uh, citrus, and uh, this yeah this stony edge as well. Then when you come to taste it, there's like a floral character, um, uh, and uh, it, it feels like there's quite a, quite a lot of richness, and uh, I don't think there's actual out-and-out -out sweetness in there, but I wouldn't be surprised if there were a few grams of sugar just to round it out, because uh, the finish you're left with is, uh, yeah, really quite rich. Uh, maybe it, it doesn't have the mineral intensity of the previous two, uh, and probably suffers as a result of being after those, uh, but, um, hey, it's... Um, yeah, it's uh, it's older, so that, that's why I put it there. But uh, nice wine, and I think without these two, I'd be probably crowing a little bit more about it, but uh, I do like it. Yeah, nice tang and freshness. Bring on the seafood. Bring on wine number five. Uh, back to Gut Hermannsburg. So this is a, the Rottenberg Vineyard. Um, not sure where. Al Altan, from the village of Altam Bamberger. Uh, but they've just put Rottenberg, the name of the vineyard, on here, uh, and it's uh, Spitley's uh, late harvest. So coming at nine percent alcohol. Um, let's give it a whirl. Well, it's 2011, so it's um, it's still on it's still on the young side. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's going to have the quite the gravitas of the uh, uh, of the two drier wines. I get a touch of jelly there, uh, and um, maybe the, it, it, it's it's on the young side. Uh, and it, more, it's funny. I got mandarin orange uh, note on the uh, on the tin pot hut. I get a little touch of that there. Uh, it smells like it's going to be good, but um, not as classy as the previous as the uh, as its two dry friends. And then you come to taste it, and suddenly it goes, hey, um, really nice balance between the sweetness and the acidity. So it's yes, it, it, you do get those that, that off dry, um, honeyed. Uh, I was talking about jelly. I get that, that mandarin jelly right at the back, but it's more this honeyed, appley richness, like apple, no, slightly cooked uh, green apple richness. Um, not maybe the mineral notes at the moment that uh, that you get there, but um, what I find about the sweetness, sometimes the sweetness masks those notes. And uh, I was saying about these two, um, as they age, do they necessarily get better um, or, or just change? Uh, the vineyard, I think, is talking louder here. Here, it's that little touch of sweetness that's, um, that's maybe got the loudest voice. And the mineral edge, I think, will come through with time. So I'd watch this. I drink these and I'd watch this because I've, I've got a feeling that um, it's. Uh, I'm not seeing it quite. I, I, maybe maybe it's it's because it's, it's a year younger and uh, I think 2011 was a slightly more challenging vintage than the, than 2010. But um, um, yeah, I, 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 it's growing on me. I mean, the the flavour I'm left with is really really tasty. It's got this uh, mixture of sweetness and sourness, richness and poise, and um, I, 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 that, that's what riesling should be. 
intriguing uh, and uh, I'll keep an eye on I guess, all of these wines. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the tin pot uh, showed a little bit better for a uh, time relaxing into its bottle. But um, I, 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 these two dry, dry ones from uh, Good Hermansburg, by far and away my favourites of, of this. I wouldn't be surprised if the, um, uh, the spirit laser crept up uh, in the near future. Whether it will get a chance to or not, we shall see. I will see you soon.